Hi everyone, just a quick video to go through the early years reforms which have currently taken place in, in an early adopter year for reception this year. They are due to become statutory next year, so this is just to give you some information about how the early years works and also to help support subject leaders with their curriculum. So the aims of this staff meeting are just to go through the new early years reforms and the current guidance for early years, to know what the prime and the specific areas of learning are now, to understand how the early years fits into your subject area and to be aware of the educational programmes for your subject area. To revisit the skills and progression documents, which I know you're all familiar with, but just to um, refresh your memory of the early years outcomes for each of those subjects and how they link with the skills and progression for the moving forward through Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. So just a quick thought before we start, what's the purpose of early years? Why do children need this curriculum and what do they do from birth to five years? So just have a quick think about that and we will come back to this um, and hopefully I'll give you the answer to why early years is important. So I have provided some handouts which have come via email to you, um, some extra reading if you want to or some um, further information. But there is a summary of the early years reforms that I've created. So basically, um, the early years reforms were designed to improve outcomes for five year olds in literature and language. So obviously for our school, we're very aware that children's communication and language um, is very low when children first start with us. And it's not only us, they've noticed that across um, the UK, really. And that's one of the reasons why they've reformed the curriculum. It's to reduce workload so that teachers spend more time with the children rather than observing and assessing and using iPads to record what the children are doing. Um, the importance is actually the teachers interacting and talking to the children and developing them as they're in the moment with them and not spending the time on iPads. To make the early learning goals clearer for assessment and to ensure that they're based on the latest research. To ensure the early learning goals are reflective of the strongest predictors of future attainment. Strength and language and vocabulary development to support disadvantaged children. To strengthen literacy and numeracy in preparation for the year one and key stage one curriculum. And it does say at the bottom there was one change to the safeguarding requirements, which is oral health. So they're encouraging um, staff within the early years to promote oral health. Obviously, we do do the brush bus when um, it is safe to do so. So the children brush the teeth with us in school. But that isn't a compulsory element of it. It's just to promote oral health and make sure children understand why they brush the teeth and what the importance of that is. So that was the only safeguarding change for the early years curriculum moving forward. So the prime areas. Um, there's three prime areas of learning within the early years. There's seven in total, but there's three prime. So communication, personal, social and emotional development and physical development are the three prime areas. And basically the difference between the prime and the specific areas is that the prime areas are what children must focus on first and then the specific areas enhance the learning that the children have already secured within the prime areas. So communication and language is the focus of this new early years reform. Um, everything, when you look at the curriculum, everything is about children being able to talk and being able to articulate what they know, which links nicely with the wider curriculum that I know everybody else is working on. So within each of the prime areas, there's sub areas, there's 17 of those in total. So for communication and language, two areas are listening, attention and understanding and speaking. For personal, social and emotional development, it's self-regulation, which links with the behaviour, building relationships and managing themselves. And then for physical development, it's gross motor skills, which is your large movements of your body, your arms, your legs, and the fine motor, which is your um, pencil grip and holding your pencil and being able to cut and um, hand-eye coordination. And then when children are secure within those areas, they move on to these specific areas. So for our school, what we're thinking is children in under threes will solely really work on the prime areas and developing those. In nursery, children will be developing and securing those skills within the prime areas, but moving on to the specific areas and starting to, to um, understand literacy and numeracy. And then in reception, our focus is more on the specific areas because hopefully children are secure within them prime areas. So they build on each other as they go through. So there's four specific areas in total, literacy, numeracy, 
and understanding the world and expressive arts and design. So again, there's sub areas within those. So for literacy, it's the comprehension, the word reading and the writing. And for numeracy, it's numbers and numerical patterns. There is a bit of controversy in terms of the new curriculum that shape, space and measure has now been taken out of the early years curriculum. But you'll see as we move forward that that isn't to say we won't teach shape, space and measure because we recognise that that's really important for the children's um, moving forward. And obviously that's part of our curriculum and we build our curriculum rather than just following this guidance. And then for the specific areas, so this is where it's really useful for the subject leaders, Understanding the world and expressive arts and design are the two areas in early years, but actually within these sub areas, they do link quite closely with the wider curriculum for key stage one and two. So we've got past and present, which obviously links with the history, people, culture and communities, which links with your RE and your geography, the natural world, which links with science. And then for expressive arts and design, you've got creating with materials, which is your art, and being imaginative and expressive where the music comes in. So for subject leaders, it's actually really clear now where your subject falls in early years. Um, obviously, communication, language, physical, they're still part of all of these areas. And actually, it's very interwoven, the um, early years curriculum. So when children are doing history, they will be doing physical development. They will be doing um, maybe some music at the same time. It's very broad and linked together but actually for your objectives and your understanding of what children should be able to do when they leave reception they are really clear now so i've sent along some guidance which is called the development matters i will come on to that further on but obviously they give you your statements for what children should be doing within each of the age ranges and the early learning goals are the expectation at the end of reception which is our assessment point so educational programmes, these are um, almost like the curriculum guidance for each of the areas. There's been huge changes to these. Um, in the previous early years um, framework, it was very much a few sentences on each of the areas, whereas now you'll see in a minute there's a real chunk of a paragraph. Um, and basically they used to inform the curriculum development, which is what I've used over the holidays, over the summer, to try and build our early years curriculum so that it links perfectly for moving forward into year one. So children have experienced the things that they really need to experience. And obviously moving forward, it will inform um, how our assessments are, are used within early years. For the educational programmes, you, you will see that the communication and language underpins everything, that, um, all of the learning that goes on in early years. And obviously all of the areas are in, interconnected. There's a stronger emphasis on pre-reception language and the links between language and comprehension and later reading um, and writing skills. There's a wider experience for, for children in the understanding the world area is advocated, which is something that we had already recognised as a skill for our children, um, especially for the disadvantaged children. They might not experience things that other children are. So just as you're doing with your trips, we're doing the same in early years, things like um, making sure they've experienced a traditional birthday party, making sure they experience them things that actually jumping in puddles that you take for granted. Um, and that's something that's really clear and advocated within the educational programme. And then obviously the same for a wider variety of ways for children to develop creative skills in their expressive arts and design. I have put in the email, um, the whole educational program. So you can look if you want to at physical development, um, PSED, communication and language, and you can see the purpose of the curriculum. But what I've done on this next slide is I've just given you the understanding the world one because I'm very conscious that that links to your subject um, more so than like the literacy and the maths. So I won't read it to you. Um, obviously, this is our curriculum educational program. So it's where we've kind of taken our ideas from for where we go forward. And you can see that they're advocating children should visit parks, libraries, museums, and meet important people like police officers, nurses, and firefighters. So if you do want to go into it in more detail, I have got a long-term overview and things like people who help us is one of our topics so that we can incorporate visits from these people coming into school. As you can see there, as I said, communication, language, literacy is through everything. And it's saying that actually children should be learning things about history and geography through books, through rhymes, through poems. Um, so it's not sort of distancing that kind of learning. It's all about interweaving that together. 
as well as building important knowledge this extends the firm military with words and support understanding across the domain so enriching and widening the vocabulary which again is something we're all very familiar with um, and you will see if you do look at the long-term overviews there's particular words that children within each age range from under threes nursery and reception will learn whilst they're with us so moving on to the development matters this is our curriculum guidance a bit like the national curriculum for you we use the development matters you have got a copy it's a lengthy document it's a big read so i wouldn't expect you to read it all but it's just for your reference for your subjects if you want to know specifically what children should be doing in each of the bands so it used to be um, we had eight bands where we had like birth to eight months, eight to 20 months. That's all gone now. So there's just three bands, birth to three, three to four, and then the reception year. We still have the characteristics of effective learning, which is about how children learn. And we also have early learning goals, which is our assessment point at the end of reception. And children's um, assessments are collated and then sent to the local authority for data collection. Now, whilst the development matters is there to guide us, it's not to be used just to plan, plan your curriculum on. So, as I said earlier, shape, shape, face and measure has been taken out of the development matters. But that's not to say that it's not important to teach children shape and to teach children space and measure. So whilst we use this as our curriculum, it's also wider curriculum that we build our broader curriculum from. And there is an importance on the best fit approach. So actually, it's not about children needing to achieve everything in this development matters to be at the stage for birth to three or to be at three to four. It's a it's a best fit. So we use our judgment of, yeah, the majority of children, um, the majority of these statements have been achieved by X child. So actually, they're working within the three to four band. The good level of development hasn't changed, so children need to achieve the expected level in the prime areas, personal, social and emotional, communication, language and physical development, and also in literacy and maths to reach expectations in reception. Um, so for us this year, we're aiming for 59% of children to reach that standard, um, whereby they've achieved expected in all five of those areas. And as I say, there is a handout for the early learning goals if you want to look more um, in depth at those. Within the new development matters, there are these things called observation checkpoints in, within the prime areas for birth to three and three to four. These are more for your SEN children and they're actually really important observation checkpoints that you can look at and decide whether a child is where they should be or whether they could be falling behind. So you might have heard with the new early years curriculum um, a lot about removing assessment and not assessing children as much. Um, as a school, we are still assessing children because we feel it's vital for us to know where the children are up to and what gaps they have in their learning. But these observation checkpoints are really key in the development matters, and I'll show you some in a second. But it's about identifying when children are behind. Um, waiting until they're ready is not helpful. We need to provide the extra help and to secure them in their earlier stages of learning so that by year one, year two, they've got the additional support that they need. So, for example, those who are not speaking in sentences are not able to write in year one. And if we don't identify that in the early years, it just is a snowball effect for the rest of the school. They need lots of stimulating experiences to help them to develop the communication. So listening to them and speaking to them are really important um, experiences within the early years. So this is an example of the new development matters. It gives you the statements along the left hand side. So expectations for communication and language for birth to three is that a baby will turn to the familiar sounds when the doorbell goes or a phone rings. They'll be startled by a loud noise, but they'll accurately locate the sound of a familiar voice, for example, looking at the parents. And then it also gives you examples of how practitioners can be developing this within the classrooms. So, for example, showing um, a genuine interest when you, you're talking to the children. It goes through each of the areas, the birth to three, three to four and reception. Um, and all the statements are in there. So these are the statements that we have taken into account when we've developed our curriculum. But obviously, as I said earlier, we've used extra as well to make sure the children have got a broad curriculum. And then this is an example of one of the observation checkpoints for birth to three. So at around six months old, does the baby respond to familiar voices? Do they turn to their own name? Do they take turns in conversations and babbling? So if the child is eight months old and the child is not doing this, it's a flag point for us to be raising with our SENCOR with staff um, and discussing why is this child not where they should be? Is this something we need to be doing to support them? 
Um, it might be that a child doesn't do that until nine months and that's absolutely fine. We're aware of that and we know that children don't do things at specific age bands. But it's just something for us to bear in mind that if children are flagging in quite a lot of these areas, there might be a concern that we need to address. So these are almost like our um, assessment points for us. And then that's just an example of exactly the same, but with the three to four curriculum. So again, you can see the statements and how we support them. And you can also see an observation checkpoint. So at around the age of three, can they shift from one task to another if you use the name, for example? Um, and they're really useful examples for children that you're not quite sure if they're where they should be or not. You can look at those and kind of reflect on are they where they should be. So this is just an example of what I've put together for subject leaders and for us as well in early years. So within early years, we do um, 12 topics. We do a topic for three weeks. So you can see in autumn one um, here for nursery, the topic was who am I and who's in my family? And then for the second half of autumn one, they did why are leaves falling off trees? Obviously, what I've tried to do is across early years, we all do the same topic. So under threes nursery and reception will all be studying in spring one, where in the world do animals come from at this point in the year? And then three weeks in, we will all change to what is Chinese New Year. However, there's progression within from under threes up to um, reception. So for this current topic, um, under threes are studying farm animals. So literally understanding what a sheep, what a cow is. You would be surprised at how many children in our school do not know the animals or the noises that they make, starting right the way from um, under threes. But actually, some children in nursery still don't know that. Um, nursery then move on to doing animals under the sea so you can see the progression they should know what farm animals are nursery will revisit that and support that understanding but actually then introducing some new knowledge for them and then in reception we move on to the jungle which links more with the geography and the wider world understanding um, where in the world things are understanding what countries are like and what the difference is between Bolton and countries where um, there might be rainforests or jungles and obviously then for Chinese New Year, it's very similar um, moving through from under threes to um, reception with progression throughout each topic. We link our art through the same. So for each of the topics, there is some kind of art project. Um, you can see in autumn one, we did painting. Spring one was down to be drawing and then this sculpture as well for spring two. So we've still got art and DT going on in there. Science is something that we're looking at. Um, moving forward, we want to sort of really strengthen this, but obviously looking at um, for the natural world, looking at animals and the differences in animals. Um, and then obviously we've also got our RE topics that I know Steph has already spoken about. So subject specific progression, you've all seen these documents for all your subjects anyway, but I just wanted to bring you back to the, the fact that we have included early years on these. So for example, when you're asked to um, be able to specify what it is that early years do. I know as a subject leader prior to being in early years, I was really unsure of how early years would actually do history or do geography. You're more than welcome to come and observe it if you want to. You're more than welcome to ask me any questions if anyone's got any questions. But this progression document should be really clear for you as children leave reception, what the expectation is and what they can already do. Um, and for year one, obviously, that should hopefully help you knowing that by the end of reception, children should know this information. So it's all saved on the resource under curriculum, which I know Andy's already done, but this is just a few examples for you. So there's one here for drawing. You can see, obviously, as we've already talked about, all your expectations for year one to six, but this is the early years one. I would say really by the end of reception, but it's something that we've all got our eye on and we're all sort of trying to develop. So obviously in under threes, holding a pencil will be very much physical mark making, maybe using brushes, chalk on the floor, big gross motor. Um, nursery will start to introduce writing names, so holding a pencil. And then by the end of reception, children should be able to write simple sentences. So you can see the progression still, even though that's just classed as early years. And then we've got the same for all of the areas. So this is your um, geography expectations the same for history and the same for dt so this was just the making project what i have also put together is so for each of the topics that we do there is an expectation that within under threes nursery and reception children will have read a book that links to that topic so for example where it's a history topic we've tried to link it to um, historical people um, we've tried to make sure that the books do not overlap so that children don't read the same book throughout early years because obviously we want to keep that enjoyment for them. We've also introduced nursery rhymes because you can see from the quote at the bottom 
It says experts in literacy and child development have discovered that if children know eight nursery rhymes by heart by the time they're four years old, they're usually among the best readers by the time they're eight. When you think about that, it, it's quite shocking, actually, that just by knowing eight nursery rhymes, children can be some of the best readers by the time they're eight. So for us, we know that our children don't always get exposed to nursery rhymes. We know parents might not know them, um, especially for our children that are English as an additional language. They won't have had any experience of those. So what we've done is we've put for under threes, nursery and reception, two nursery rhymes for every half term. We'll sing them twice a day, once in the morning, once in an afternoon. So that by the end of early years, hopefully the children will know 36 rather than just the eight. But actually just embedding them nursery rhymes and singing them with the children has a huge impact on reading um, for children moving on. OK, and then obviously, as you've all got, you've got knowledge organisers for all of your topics. I've created the same for um, reception, nursery and under threes for all of our topics. Under threes send these home. Um, obviously, they don't have books to record the learning in, but staff are aware of what this sticky knowledge is and what the children need to know from that topic. These will be really useful for the subject leaders. So again, you can see what expectation children should know, what words they should know, what the um, idea of the topic is, what nursery rhyme we're singing. Um, so when you come in to do your monitoring, you can pick up children, you can pick up books and you should see evidence of this sticky knowledge in their books and for the children um, should be able to articulate it. So again, for nursery and reception, these go in our learning journals, which you're more than welcome to come and look at. And as I say, you'll see the evidence there of the history and the geography that we have been doing. Obviously, please bear in mind with early years, it's less formal. So a lot of the lessons might be more practical. It might be that we've got evidence on tapestry or seesaw. Um, but you should be able to talk to the children and they should be able to articulate these um, this sticky knowledge to you. Just a quick overview in terms of assessment. Obviously, I know I will have completely boggled your minds now, but our assessment is slightly different to yours. There's two pieces of assessment that we do termly. So we have a development matters tracker, which is basically all those statements in the development matters, which we tick off when children can do them each term. And then there's an age related expectation tracker, which shows you where the children are in relation to their age. So there's four um, bands. There's below, which means the children haven't really achieved in that age range. So if a child is three to four below, they are really working birth to three and they are just starting to work within the three to four. Curriculum. If they are emerging three to four, it means they've got less than half of the statements within that area for the development matters. If they're developing, they've got more than half within three to four, so they're really on the way with that. And then if they're secure, they've got practically all of them, but we recognise they might not achieve everything because it's a best fit model. So if they've got one or two statements missing, we still move them on to the next curriculum. So if they're three to four secure, they will be working on reception um, curriculum and actually we'll be going back through our interventions and on our class action plans to address those gaps um, that they've still got in the three to four curriculum. And then this is just an example. I know it's blurry. I wasn't expecting you to read it, but it's just to show you this is our development matters tracker. So you can see we've got the birth to three development matters statements for communication and language. Then we've got them for three to four and then we've got them for reception. And that builds through for all seven areas of learning. And you can see here the children, obviously I've taken the names off, but you can see that there's gaps in birth to three here. Um, so they've started working on three to four. They've got quite a few, but these are areas that we've still got to work on with that child. Um, the children that are greyed out is because when they started with us in reception, I haven't assessed them on birth to three because they were already quite confident within the next framework. Up. And then this is our age related expectation tracker. So just like you, we put a zero for our baseline. So when children first start with us, we assess where they are at the start of the year. At the end of autumn, um, so you can see this child here was entering reception when she started and they've already um, a secure in reception. So this child is definitely one of our higher ability pupils. But then likewise, you can see we've got children still working within the birth to three. So we've got a huge range of children um, within our curriculum and our assessments. So moving on, just thinking back to what we talked about at the start. So what's the purpose of early years? Well, there's seven key features of effective practice for early years. One of them is that we want the best for every child, which I think is pretty standard across the school. It's what we all, all are striving for. We want high quality care. So we want our practitioners to provide that care, but we also want high quality education. 
We've got curriculum, which is what we want the children to learn. And that's something that I've worked more on um, by developing this and using this new curriculum and developing the long term overviews and the knowledge organisers. We've got the pedagogy, which helps children to learn. We've got our assessment, which I briefly shared with you there. We've got the self-regulation and executive function, which is the cognitive development. And we've got the partnership with parents, which, again, is something I'm working on this year um, to try and really engage the parents with our curriculum and with our, our early years. So what is the purpose of early years? This was taken from the New Development Matters, and I really liked it because I thought it's really clear as to what the purpose is. So the New Development Matters states that it's vital that we get to know and value all of the children. All children learn more in their period from birth to five than in any other time of their life. If children are at risk of falling behind, the majority, the best time to help them catch up and keep up is in the early years. So if they leave us in reception already behind, we've already got a, a huge job to try and fill that. Every child can make progress if they're given the right support. When we succeed in giving every child the best start in their early years, we give them what they need today but we also set them up with every chance of success for tomorrow. And I just thought that's a really important quote, actually. I know, obviously, everybody's got a really important job to do, and Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 curriculum is really important, but if we can get it right down in the early years for you, hopefully that should make it Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 that slightly bit easier. So the same for subject leaders. Obviously, bear that in mind. Um, if we get history right in the early years, history should go right throughout the school. If we get it right in geography, it'll go right throughout key stage one and key stage two and we want to give every child that possible really really good start to their education obviously I know remotely this is quite hard but if anyone's got any questions please email me um, I'm happy to talk to anyone about their subject individually if anyone wants any additional support um, look at the skills document see where the progression is from start to finish and if anybody wants anything please don't hesitate to ask I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can thank you very much